Okay, today we're going to learn some simple techniques on how to uh, paint the new Cursed Forest trees uh, that Gadzooks Gaming put out. There are uh, eight trees total, four of them have kind of spooky faces on them, and then four are ones without faces. So to start off, I took the uh, models themselves and I primed them in the Leather Brown Primer from Army Painter. It gives me a nice base brown to work from. They really are lovely sculpts, uh, lots of relief. So it allows me to use some very simple techniques like washes and dry brushes. So let's start off with Agrax Earthshade and you're gonna see me use this uh, Agrax in a way that uh, I normally don't use a shade. And I am just going to completely douse these models in Agrax. Um, normally when I use a wash, I'm far more precise in how I use it. Um, if I see pooling like you're seeing now, I fix it immediately um, with a clean brush. But what I'm effectively trying to do in these recesses is I don't want an even shading of the recesses. I want them to be uneven to give even more texture to the finished models. So I actually want the pooling that you're gonna see. So that's the first one and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this obviously to the second one and now they're all done and they've dried. Now I'm gonna do an overbrush using Steel Legion Drab which uh, is a very close match to the uh, primer color. And we're gonna use it just using a large brush from Citadel. So this will be a little bit different than just your standard dry brush because I'm gonna keep a lot more paint on the brush than I normally would for a dry brush. Um, and this is going to Kind of bring back the base color but leave a lot of that agrax uh, both the thin down agrax and where it pooled i want that to stay in place so we'll just do a full just overbrush on the entire model that way if we had any agrax that uh, hit the higher points of the model uh, this will paint over it so it'll also hit, because I'm doing an overbrush, not a dry brush, it'll hit uh, into the recesses a little bit, which I'm good with. Um, and as I go through this, you'll see, you know, kind of the agrax disappear a little bit. Um, you'll notice that there's areas where the agrax is very concentrated, where it pooled, and places where it's not. And again, that was on purpose. Um, I did it that way um, differently than, again, I normally would shade a model. So that's our first one. Now we're going to go ahead and just do the other uh, seven using that same overbrush. Okay, now that that's dried, we can start actually with some dry brushing. So we're going to take some Talaran sand from uh, Games Workshop. And I'm using a makeup brush, um, which is really becoming slowly my dry brush of choice. Um, it's a soft bristle brush. It's used for applying, you know, makeup. Uh, they're cheap and they last longer than you would anticipate. And it gives you a softer dry brush. Um, so even though I'm doing a little bit of a uh, almost overbrush here, because of the nature of the softness of the uh, makeup brush, it's gonna um, really give me the highlights that I want. Because I do want some of that um, Steel Legion Drab to, to be there and be visible along with the Agrax. You'll notice I'll probably go over the faces as well as the um, top areas of the trees a little bit more than I go over the other areas. And I'm, I'm going ultimately for, you know, areas of variation between the Agrax all the way up to the highest highlight that I'm gonna use. And that ultimately will give me a bit of a natural look. And uh, we just go ahead and do, we do the same thing to the other seven. But if you're not using makeup brushes, um, spend the $12, get yourself a set. I think you're gonna find them to become your dry brush of choice as well. All right, next layer up, let's go with the Karak Stone. Now I'm using another flatter but uh, makeup brush, but again, same type of thing. It's a soft bristle makeup brush. It's gonna make my dry brushing a little bit subtler. And now I wanna just bring out some key features. So I'm not gonna dry brush this exactly the same over the entire model. I'm gonna do it more of a focused dry brush. So you'll see I'll start with the, kind of the faces here on those trees that have the faces because I want them really to stand out a little bit more. And 
And just like when I paint anything, I, you know, apply some paint and take a step back and look at it, figure out, you know, where adjustments need to be made. You'll notice I'm going to focus a little bit on the top areas there as well. And again, the idea being now between Agrax Earth Straight, uh, Earthshade all the way up to the Carrick Stone, I'm going to get a nice, you know, variations of browns on all of these trees, which will give them a more natural look. Uh, this is not top level painting. Um, uh, with terrain, I tend to do very basic techniques to make it look good. Um, it's a lot different than the attention that I put on models. So we're going to do the same dry brush on all the other seven models. Again, concentrating on the faces and getting that variation. All right, so now it's time to kind of work on the glow. And first I'm going to go ahead and put areas where I want the ultimately the green glow to be. I'm going to paint them white first to give a base for that green glow. Um, if I didn't do this, it would be really hard for me to get the contrast that I want. By the way, this uh, titanium uh, opaque white uh, from Old Holland is by far my favorite white paint. Um, I find its um, consistency is better than any other company's white paint. It is water-based acrylics, just like you know GW and Scale 75 and everybody else puts out, um, but uh, the pigment uh, count is really high in it and it, um, it mixes down uh, nicely. So I'm mixing it now with some flow improver. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of go into the faces. Um, basically any place where I expect there to be this green, I'm going to hit with white first. And because I've thinned it down and I want it to really to have full coverage it's uh it's gonna take a few coats which i'm fine with um so you, you're only gonna see obviously a little snippet because i um, try to edit this down to make it a little less painful to watch but you'll notice that um once i finish and we go back um that it's gonna be you know multi coats and the white will be in there other thing to note is I'm I'm not being super precise here. Um, I'm okay with some of the white bleeding out onto the edges because that's going to help with the glow effect. Um, what's key though is that I need the inner recesses to definitely be white. Sometimes painting terrain can be uh, a nice break from painting models. When you paint models and you're trying to really push yourself with new techniques and to really get uh, top level quality on your models, it's kind of nice to take a break and uh, just paint some terrain where you can relax a little bit and you know make it look good, tabletop quality, but not uh, golden demon quality. So that's the first coat on this tree. Um, off camera, you'll, I'm gonna go back and do another coat, not just for this tree, but uh, all of the trees. So now that's done. Now we're gonna bring in uh, a floor, uh, fluorescent paint. Uh, there's several companies that make these. Um, a, a, any type of bright green will work. Um, there's a luminosity that you get from fluorescent paints that I like. And uh, they tend to be thinner than most paints. So they're more of a tint um, than say a layer paint. And that's part of the reason I went with the white first, um, is so that I'm gonna be tinting white as opposed to tinting the brown. This is gonna take several coats as well. So you'll notice as I'm putting the fluorescent on there right now, it uh, it's not as dark as it'll appear when I finish. Um, that's because this is gonna take a few coats because of how thin the paint is. I'm also gonna bleed this out onto some of the brown areas beyond just the white and that'll help with that glow effect but all we're doing is just tinting all the white areas and like i said it'll take uh take a few layers of this um, so once it dries i'll go back on each model and do it again i think i ended up doing three layers total um, and that gave me the bright green that i wanted And uh, that's me just picking up some of the areas that pooled a little bit because it almost has a wash consistency. All 
All right, so I've give did a couple coats of the uh, fluorescent paint. Now we're gonna work on some of the surrounding areas, so the stone areas, and I'm gonna keep these stone areas real simple. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and base them with uh, this Eschen Brown. Now something I think that is really neat is, you know, it's very difficult sometimes to judge how a paint looks until it has a contrasting paint next to it. So. This, the browns that I've been using, um, you know, are kind of drowned out by those plain brown stones. But now that I'm going in and I'm getting a gray there, uh, something that's tonally different and, you know, in the different color, you'll notice that uh, the brownness and naturalness of the trees tend to stand out. Uh, so that's one thing to consider when you're painting is don't look at colors isolated. Sometimes you have to look at them next to other colors to really figure out how they're gonna end up looking. So now we're just gonna literally, for all eight of these, we're just gonna base them with this dark Eschen Brown, which is uh, a nice dark gray color. All right, now back to some dry brushing. We're gonna dry brush these stones. We're gonna go up to uh, Dawn Stone. Again, you'll notice I'm using a makeup brush. And now I'm just doing a simple dry brush. Again, I, this is quick and e quick and fast. I want this train to look good on the table. I'm not going to enter it into a paint contest. And this, all this dry brush is going to do is just get a, give a little depth to the blue, to the brown, uh, to the grays. And we'll do it on all eight of these. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with the next level up in gray, and we're just do a very light dry brush of the uh, administratum, administratum uh, gray from GW. This again, lighter than what I did the Dawnstone, and uh, should give us a nice depth. And again, using that makeup brush. Now that we've got all that done, oh, one more. You see just how quick and light I'm doing that last dry brush. Okay, one more thing I'm gonna do uh, from a paint perspective is I'm gonna use uh, this uh, diorama series from Life Color. Um, this is the, uh, uh, I think it's the vegetable, um, dark green or damp green. And I love these paints. There's a whole set of them you can buy for weathering. And uh, I use them all the time and they go from grays to greens. And they give really some nice tools for doing natural weathering. Um, so in this case, what I'm doing is just adding a bit of green to where uh, the trees meet the ground. And this is gonna simulate, you know, just the runoff and the staining that you see um, imply some of the grass and uh, especially on these models with the faces, it also is gonna give a nice green balance to them from the ground to the faces, but still being a different green. It's a very, uh, it's almost a wash and uh, it just stains and uh, highly recommend these paints. And this is, this is a subtlety that's not required, um, but it's worth it. And you could do it with any green. You can make your own version of this um, by thinning down some green paint. But um, I don't know. This For me, this, this paint was worth buying. And like I said, there's a whole set of it that, was, that uh, you can buy. And it goes from uh, some nice grays into uh, the greens. All right, this is a piece of Tupperware that I have probably had for 10 years. And about 10 years ago, I took a big thing of PVA glue and I mixed it with water and I keep it sealed and it has been used over and over and over again to, you know, apply 
uh, gravel, apply static grass and, and everything. So I'm gonna just apply a little dots of static grass in between some of the stones to, again, give it a little bit of a variation, uh, visual interest, not required, but uh, uh, I think it's a nice touch to break up some of those gray areas. And now I'm just sprinkling that static grass onto the uh, the globs of PVA, watered down PVA. And I'm doing four at a time so that the PVA glue doesn't dry up on me before I can get to uh, put um, static grass on it. I kind of let it sit there a little bit. And then go back to the first first one now that it's had a chance to dry and I just lightly tap it from the bottom. Um, I'm tapping it from the low source to try to get it to stand up. So by tipping it upside down and tapping it, I'm going to get some of those strands to uh, stand up. And here I'm blowing on it, um, basically perpendicular to the way I want the grass to stand. And that allows your static grass to stand up a little bit. Now this is a flock that I've had for a long time and it's a it's a flaky green flock it's plastic uh, I wish I remembered where I got it I've had it forever a big bag of it and it's it gives a neat um, kind of mossy uh, uh, leaf type effect so I want to kind of break up some of the brown a little bit by giving the impression of kind of vines uh, green vines working their way up the tree. So I'll draw it out here uh, in the PVA. But any type of moss flock or anything would, would give you the same effect. And then I'll sprinkle the flock on there. And just give it a light tap. That's exactly the effect I'm going for. So now we'll go ahead and do it um, to the rest of them. For some of the trees without the faces, I might do two of these uh, just because we don't have the faces to break up the browns. I'm just going to go through and do this to all eight trees. Same idea. All right. So my last step is I wanted to get some kind of some browns, some lighter browns color wise in there. Uh, so I've got this. This is from a, uh, a company that makes rail, railway uh, railroad diorama um, vines. So I think if you uh, just search uh, on any supplier that puts out, um, you know, stuff to make railroad dioramas with, you'll find this stuff. And uh, it's basically kind of like, kind of like not static grass, um, but uh, it's different because it's in strips. You see me just peeling these strips off and uh, kind of this dead leaf look. And I'll use this not only as a, another type of you know growth coming from below so i'm just going to put some super glue in there and uh, it's a little fiddly uh, because you got to find you know places on the uh, branches there for it to stick so you're going to see me messing around with it um and you know blowing on it and kind of sticking it there but once once it sticks you know it gives a, a real neat effect and I'll do this both as kind of a growing up the side of the tree, um, but I'll also, you'll see me do it as almost like a bush. And they, you know, they kind of imply flower, dead flowers a little bit or dead leaves, um, but uh, they're cool. Now you can see in the upper right corner there, you can see where I did it just to the base and I'm gonna do it just to the base here. And so instead of growing up, I'm doing just kind of a bush area and 
just using the end of the tweezers to get it so it has enough super glue to stick. All right, so that's the trees. Um, you uh, Hopefully this will be helpful for you. Uh, you should grab these if you haven't gotten them from Gadzooks. They're wonderful sculpts and they make really, really nice terrain. And uh, hopefully this gives you a way to make them look good without uh, spending too much time. Take care.